Good morning and welcome to Cincy Lifestyle. Thank you for choosing to be with us this morning. We certainly have a nice program planned for you, a great program planned for you, and uh, we are glad you have joined us to share it. A eh, Mona? That is so correct, Clyde. We've got some fun stuff happening and some good information that you'll get on today's show that you get every day when you watch us on, on the show. That so. is that is That's so, right, Clyde. Yep, that is so true. Uh, by the way, folks, welcome back to winter <laughs> for next for the next day or so. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, we spend a lot of time now dealing, uh, talking about uh, quarantining and isolating and social distancing and all that. So our language has changed a little bit. But you know, too, folks are always looking for stuff to do, and boy, did we find something good that you will that you may not have seen. This is Father Tim Pelch, I believe is how his name is pronounced, of Detroit. Uh, and he, was, he has come up with a unique way of maintaining social distancing during Holy Week uh, in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. And this is what he's doing. He is using a squirt gun to uh, share holy water, to, uh, full of holy water for folks as they drive up. So they drive up, roll the window down, and he gives them a water gun squirt with uh, holy water. Now... With nearly 300 million people sitting around with nothing much to do these days, Mona, <laughs> guess what? They came up with some different memes on this. So, for instance, there he is holding a lightsaber <laughs> water gun. <laughs> uh, then there's, a, there's another version coming up. It's the good, the bad, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That that is hilarious. People um, really are getting creative with uh, things to do while they are home. I love that. But you know what, Clyde? It is getting to be water gun season, and it was one of the best things we did when I was a kid was play water guns in, in the backyard. How about you? I, oh yeah. Oh, most definitely. Water guns, cap guns, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but, you know, of course, this whole conversation about the squirt gun in the first place is because we are in the age of social, uh, excuse me, social distancing. And can you imagine how tough it's going to be for any orchestra to perform? But that's not stopping the Cincinnati Chamber Orchestra. They are still making music to soothe the soul in these trying times, and they've taken a creative approach to doing it. And here now to talk with us uh, about it is Eckert Proy. He's the music director for the Cincinnati Chamber Orchestra. Eckert, thank you so much for talking with us today. Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about uh, some, of the, some of the work that's gone into moving the operation online. Talk about some of your virtual performances and some of the other things you're doing. Well, I mean, of course, the major problem that all orchestras have is that we are a non-digital medium in a digital time. And so uh, it is a challenge, but it's also a great opportunity. And so what um, we've done is really produce online content, like interviews with former guest artists, for instance, how they are dealing with the, with the crisis, for instance, in an apartment in New York City. Um, one of our musicians has done interviews um, with uh, music directors, former and current music directors of the orchestra. Musicians uh, create multi-track recordings playing with themselves. And so there's all sorts of things. We have educational programming in collaboration with My Cincinnati as well. And we're preparing our summer music, um, our virtual summer music presence for this August. Since we cannot play live, we still want to be there. We want to be uh, present. And so we're going to uh, produce uh, online content for that. So, so you have these guest artists and, of course, your own musicians who uh, are part of this process. Uh, what have you learned about uh, what have you learned about them during this during this effort? Yes. Yeah, so, so first, of course, there's this sense of extreme loss. You know, I mean, we we um, practice thousands and thousands and decades of, uh, of, of hours and decades of our lives honing this one skill and then it's just gone and we can't perform. And then uh, people adjust really, really quick and um, and play for virtual audiences. And but what I've noticed is that everybody goes back to kind of uh, to the basics doing exercises they haven't done since high school or since college days and kind of retune their whole technical machine, um, which is really interesting because usually you don't have time to do that. And so now everybody has a lot of time and go back to the basics and re-examine everything they do. 
So, uh, but you are still doing in this era of social distancing some uh, live performances or, or, or at least planning to. Can you tell us about those? Yeah, we call it C, uh, CC, uh, CCO to go. Um, so the next seven weeks, we are having um, over 60 uh, performances outdoors in small groups. We can't really say where we are going to be when because of the social distancing rules, but we have a collaboration with the art museum, with the zoo, um, with the uh, Pyramid Hill Sculpture Park, with the Nature Center, uh, with the um, SC, uh, SPCA, where we're playing for their pets once a, once a, once a week. Um, really just trying to be present to surprise people if you just walk by. Um, and, and also create content that way. All right. Well, you know, music is uh, really important at this point in time. So let's tell folks a little bit about uh, how they can find out more about your performances or the information that you're putting online. Oh, it's, it's very easy. You just type in uh, CCO uh, at home and um, that will lead you to our uh, web page, to our Facebook page, to our, to our, to our Twitter. So, and and uh, we're easy to find these days. Everything is so easy. <laughs> That's good news. Eckert, thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you. All right, Mona? Well, we've all made math mistakes, right? Usually, you know, they only call minutes of our time or maybe some slight inconvenience but what if your mistake caused problems for more than two centuries well it happened to a map maker right here in the tri-state and it's the perfect example of cincinnati curiosities are you frustrated when your checkbook doesn't balance have pity then on Joseph Guest, whose monumental mathematical miscalculation caused five whole acres of downtown Cincinnati to disappear, at least on paper. Guest's blunder has bedeviled Cincinnati property records for 200 years. This is the very same Joseph Guest for whom Guest Street in the West End is named. In the early days of our city, Mr. Guest was an upright, honored, and active citizen. He was personally involved in creating our fire department and our public school system. He was known as a particularly fastidious man who double-checked everything. Because of his eye for detail, the city of Cincinnati in 1819 appointed Joseph Guest as its official surveyor. Mr. Guest was so excited about the appointment that he rushed out to acquire brand new surveying equipment because he did not trust the surveying equipment commonly available in Cincinnati back then, Guest insisted on his own custom-made paraphernalia. And that's where he miscalculated. See, according to one story, Guest's personal quarter furlong pole was mismeasured and added an additional foot for every thousand measured feet. Oops. Another version claims that Guest sent away to England for a very expensive and very precise 24-inch brass ruler. Allegedly, he didn't notice that the British manufacturer retained an extra 1 32nd of an inch at the ends of the ruler to absorb the bumps and bruises of daily use. As a consequence, Mr. Guest's customized survey chain lacked an additional inch for every 64 feet he measured. Now, while an inch or two might seem like an insignificant rounding error, that mistake, when spread over the four or five square miles of downtown Cincinnati, adds up rather quickly. In 1986, a modern surveyor estimated that all of Joseph Guest's miscalculations pushed onto a single plot would total more than 200,000 square feet or about five acres of missing property. Between 1819 and his retirement in 1844, surveyor Guest rolled out his erroneously calibrated chains from the Ohio River up to northern reaches of over the Rhine, from the Mill Creek on the west to Mount Adams on the east. Ever since, Cincinnati has attempted to recover the error. Instead of remeasuring every single piece of downtown property, the city now inserts a footnote into the affected deeds, acknowledging the adjustment known as the Guest Standard that must be applied to accommodate Joseph Guest's historic boo-boo. We love it, and we want to welcome the man behind the Cincinnati Curiosity blogger and history buff, Greg Hand. It is always great to have you here.
Thank you. This is wonderful, a math mistake. Since I was not a math person <laughs> anyway, I could see this happening. Others. I, I, had, I could Absolutely. see this happening. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. As I was putting this together, I had to keep going back and uh, thinking, am, am I doing this calculation? Did it add or did it subtract? That uh -huh. sort of thing. Uh -huh. But, you know, this was really important for Cincinnati because um, we, we tend to think of Cincinnati in those early days as hardy pioneers coming out and conquering mm -hmm. the wilderness mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. This was a real estate development. The, the, the people who founded Cincinnati got this land and, and were very interested in selling it off. They even gave away uh, parcels to the first 30 people who took advantage of, of this offer. So surveying was incredibly important. Sure. Of the three people who formed the company to found Cincinnati, one was a surveyor. And so, so surveying was incredibly important. And so having a couple inches off on your deed meant a lot when you were selling your property back in the early sure. days. And, and it continues to mean a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> exactly, exactly. The, the, uh, there were so many pieces of property that were affected by Joseph Guest and his, his measurements that, uh, that they just decided, let's, let's just uh, throw in an extra figure for these properties <laughs> in this area. Yeah. And yet, <laughs> old Mr. Guest got a street named after him anyway. He was uh, extremely particular, as, as we said. He, he, he was very precise in his mm -hmm. measurements. He was just using the wrong size ruler. <laughs> if, well, you, if you discount well, that, you yeah. know. Other than that, how'd you like uh, the show, Mrs. And he, uh, uh, he was very much involved in the city. Uh, uh, in, in addition to uh, the public schools and the fire department, um, he was involved in um, a couple Bible societies in town, so he was very well known. All right. All right, Greg, it's always a pleasure to have Thanks, you on. Greg. This was a great one. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a ton, Greg. Absolutely. Now, coming up here on Cincy Lifestyles, starting a family or growing one can be scary right now. We'll talk to a women's health expert about the questions you should be asking and the tests available for expecting mothers during this pandemic. Plus, if your home needs more than just a spring cleaning, a familiar name can help. We'll tell you about the added precautions Stanley Steamer is taking. Keep your family and coworkers safe. All that whole lot more on the other side of the break. Well, the current pandemic has upended so many of our everyday activities, and it's especially overwhelming for women who are pregnant or trying to get pregnant. And you know what? Those changes are really overwhelming, but we've got a little help today. We're going to talk more about this with Julia Wilkinson, a women's health expert and genetic counselor. Julia, thanks for talking to us. And I'm going to dive right in. What can people do while they're at home to be just more proactive and prepare for their little bundle of joy? So Mona, I'm getting this question all the time from my patients as so many people are at home and aren't really certain exactly what they need to do to prepare or maybe anxious about some of those next steps. So here's a few tips and tricks for things that you can be doing right now to prepare and still be safe. The first thing is to make sure to do your research. Gather information for your family health history and well as well as your partner's family health history. Find out if there's anything in the family that you might be concerned about for your health or the health of your unborn child. If you're not already pregnant, it's also a good idea to go ahead and start tracking your monthly cycles. There's lots of different apps out there that can help you do that so you don't forget. And make sure that you're gathering all of your medical records and all this information that you're collecting, get it into one place. It's important for your current doctor to have a clear picture of your medical history so they can have all the information at their fingertips. Don't forget to make sure to think about your vaccination history as well. That might take some digging if it's in your childhood records, but it's important to know if there's things that you might be missing or need booster shots of. And then as a genetic counselor, one of the things that I think is incredibly important for everyone to have is to consider doing your genetic carrier screening. 
The good news is that with companies like Invite, this is something you can also be doing from home. With a little bit of homework and a little bit of collection of that data, you can get all the information to your doctor's office so that you're prepared for the next appointment, whether or not it's in person or via telehealth. That's really good advice, Julia. Um, are there tests that are available to help us understand really the health of the pregnancy? There are some tests like ultrasounds that you would still need to do in your doctor's office, but your genetic carrier screening is one test that you can be doing at home to give us some more information. This testing is assessing the risk for you and your partner to be a carrier for a genetic condition and possibly for passing that on to your unborn child. So this is important testing to be done so that we can have the information and think about, are there other tests? Are there precautions that need to be taken or any preparations that need to be made for your delivery? All right, this genetic testing really seems important. Um, tell us where we can get more information about it. On the Invite website, invite.com, there are some great patient resources. There's some educational videos and lots more information about the different options of testing available to you. Julie, I really appreciate all your help. There's a lot of women. I've got a, a niece out there that um, just had a baby. So really good information um, for those who are looking to get pregnant or already pregnant. Thanks for talking to us. Clyde. When it comes to your home, you want to make sure you're trusting a company with seven decades of cleaning, disinfecting, and restoration services under their belt. And that's exactly what Stanley Steamer offers. And to tell us more, I want to welcome Nino DiVincenzo, who is the Vice President of Branch Operations at Stanley Steamer. Nino, thank you so much for being here with us today. Good morning, Clyde. Thank you for having me. So what changes have you made to your service in light of this pandemic? Well, once the pandemic hit and we became an essential business, we needed to make a lot of changes in order to protect both our customers and our technicians. So we did some things like we implemented facial covering and disposable gloves on every job. We implemented um, emergency paid sick leave for our technicians so that they wouldn't have to think about coming to work if they weren't feeling well. We disinfect our equipment between every job. We operate with one-man crews instead of two-man crews whenever possible. And then, uh, obviously, we trained them on social distancing. And most important thing we did at the, tech, at the customer level is we changed out our cleaning pre-spray with a EPA-registered list and disinfectant, which is a disinfectant that's proven effective against the viruses that cause COVID-19, so that not only are we doing a great cleaning for the customers, but we're also disinfecting their hard surfaces. Now, if somebody's thinking about maybe having their home or office cleaned right now, what advice do you have for them? Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you, a lot of people have been cooped up in their homes now. We've been in the shelter in place order. So I think they're realizing that there's a lot of surfaces that even prior to the pandemic may have needed that spring cleaning. And now it's a great time because we know that the virus could potentially live on surfaces for extended periods of time. And, uh, and then as far as businesses go, obviously with businesses starting to open up now, I think it's more important than ever for them, not just for their employees, but also for their customers to, to have us come in, do a deep cleaning, a disinfecting, and everybody will think, I think will feel a little bit better about starting to get back out there. How do you think this will affect your business in the long run? Well, I can tell you that a lot of the things I talked about implementing as far as um, addressing the virus, um, are going to stay in place. So social distancing and all of those things I think are going to become commonplace. And I think the commercial end of our business is going to really explode. I think business owners and managers are thinking a lot more about increasing the frequency of the cleanings that they have done. If some of our viewers would like to have you come out and clean their home or office or just want to get some more information, how can they go about doing that? Well, there's two ways that they can reach us. So one way is obviously they can call 1-800-STEAMER or they can visit stanleysteamer.com and go ahead and book their services online. And right now in Cincinnati, we have a great offer available for first responders and hospital and medical workers. And that's not just nurses and doctors, that's anybody that's working in that field, um, whether it's environmental services or people that are checking patients in at the front desks. And we're offering 25% off any of our services in addition to a free bottle of spotter. All right, Nino, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Well, we'll be back with more Cincy Lifestyle on the other side of the break. Plus, be sure to check us out on Facebook. Yeah, that's where we post all our guest segments and community stories right there. So you can watch them and 
share them with your friends. So like and follow us right now at facebook.com slash Cincy Lifestyle. We'll be back. Well, there it is. Read it and weep. It's going to be a little gray and gloomy for a little while longer. Maybe some rain coming your way, too. But as we get close to the weekend, maybe a little cause for optimism. Now, coming up tomorrow here on Cincy <laughs> Lifestyle, we'll talk to country star Trace Atkins about his upcoming concert. Now, Trace has got some great pipes. He just is so deep in his voice. Anyway, he'll be joined by such names in the entertainment world as Sam Elliott, who's got some pretty good pipes of his own, and Grammy Award-winning singer C.C. Winans. Also good pipes for the National <laughs> Memorial Day concert. Kind of a theme there, Mona. <laughs> That's right. I love CC. Yes. All right. Then we talked to some some of the hardest working athletes in town. It's not the Bengals and it's not FC Cincinnati. We've got head coach of the Sirens women's soccer team on the show, and they're going to talk about their upcoming season. We have all that so much more happening tomorrow right here on Cincy Lifestyle. And I, I gather they're going to put Allie through her paces. <laughs> I'm sure you are right. All right well, man. that's Cincy Lifestyle for Wednesday, May 20th. Thank you so much for watching. And remember to give us a shout out in all the ways that you know how to do that. And I want you to make it a great day. Thanks for watching our video. If you liked what you saw, hit that subscribe button. You can also check out full episodes of the show you've never seen before or watch your favorites again and again. And as always, make it a great day.